Hi, Stephen. Uh, Guy Havard from, from Sky. Could you just sort of uh, run through the runners and riders, really, and whether you've got injuries, players ruled out, doubts for, for tomorrow's game? Yeah, sure, Guy. We had uh, three, uh, obviously, the three players from the original squad out, Daryl Lennon, James Coleman, Harry Arthur, and then obviously the two players that have been ruled out, Aaron Connolly and Adam Ida, and then Dave McGoldrick is out, is out of this game with uh, an abductor muscle injury. Um, that's going to rule him out of two games against Wales and Finland. And James McCarthy is is not too bad. He's he's uh, you know, well, but we'll have to wait and see how he is in relation to the proximity of the game tomorrow. So he's doubtful, but he's he hasn't suffered any tear or anything like that. The scan has been okay. With it. There's good news on his scan. Okay, so hopefully just well, just one out at the moment. Um, how are you going to play in terms of team selection with the game next week as well, and the fact that it's not so long ago that you know a couple of days ago that they played two hours plus penalty shootout. So we will, should we expect quite a few changes tomorrow? Well, you know, I'm not going to sort of select my team here, but I, I do think that uh, listen, we've a lot to consider. Um, you know, we've a lot to consider. Obviously, the players play 120 minutes, but um, at the same time, every international is very important. And, uh, every international is significant in the lives of the players. Um, albeit there isn't a full house because of the current situation. So some may think that dilutes the importance of it, but uh, it still shouldn't, you know, it still should be an occasion in itself. And all the players will want to play. Playing for your country is, you know, very, very proud. All the players are very proud to play for Ireland. They're hurting at the moment. You know, the whole thing after, after losing the other night, I think uh, it's a huge disappointment to lose in the manner that we did because the players were absolutely excellent the other night. And, um, so we've got to review all of that. And uh, I've spoken about some of the injuries that we have, and then we make decisions based on that. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Tony? Stephen, as well as reviewing the game, are you going to review your situation regarding the, the COVID? Because... To lose two important players as you did, very unfortunate, and, and it could have affected the result in the game. Yeah, there's no doubt that it was um, hugely disappointing, you know, hugely disappointing. And, um, you know, I think, uh, yeah, no, I was very, very disappointed about, about, about that. And, uh, you know, I think obviously, it's, uh, we talked about, Aaron was selected into the team and, and Adam really, you know, would have been a good attacking option for us as well. And we find out on the on the match day and then sort of a bit of a saga because it was, you know, the possibility existed of an appeal and so forth to the situation. So it was um it, it wasn't good preparation um on the on the match day because we were having discussions about about it. And the impact of it rather than the match itself. But I think, uh, um, but listen, there's nothing we can do about it. The players were excellent on the night. You know, there were no guarantees if we had the, the, the two players. And the players were excellent on the night and deserved to win the game. You know, they gave everything up to themselves. They showed their quality and they showed, uh, you know, the, the talent that they have. And, uh, um, and I even feel there's more to come, you know, there is more to come, but that was a good display um, to go away from home and sort of, you know, be the better team overall in a tight, tightly contested game. Um, but to lose uh, something that we just have to live with. Stephen, you'll be going away very soon to, to Finland and will you have to review like how far away from each other you'll be on the plane, for example? Well, we'll have we we'll obviously have the results this evening of, of the COVID tests, you know, um, from from yesterday. So we have the results this evening, you know. Maybe in normal circumstances, you wouldn't have an issue with any of that, and certainly, uh, you know, it's not something that uh, not something that should have should have arisen. And um, you know, um, well, it's, we're just dis I'm disappointed with it. Damien from PA, please.
Thanks, Stephen. Um, Stephen, given the circumstances surrounding the game the other night, will there always be an element of what might have been for you? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, I, you know, we have to live with it. You know, we have to, it's something that, you know, we're going to have to live with for a long time, I think. Uh, you know, I think uh, that's, that's, that's the nature of uh, sometimes penalty shootouts and, and even game chances that we had to win in the game right at the end of the game, right in, in extra time. And uh, uh, but Slovakia themselves had, 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 you know, had efforts and um, it was a tough game and, you know, as, as you would have seen with Slovakia and Wales, you know, they had over 60% of the possession of both games against Wales and, um, you know, they're a good team, but we showed, um, even without the players that we were missing, you know, I'm missing quite a few now. Um, that and and the changes and all of that and everything we worked on, we had to sort of had to change some of the stuff. So, um, with with, with that in mind, um, you know, uh, you know, the players were excellent overall. And and just on on that front, have you s seen the seeds of what you want in place for your island team? Yeah, of course, of course that that you know the performance gives an, an indication of what we expect and, and to improve upon that. But you know, I'm not trying to you know, I'm not I'm not gonna try and spin a situation where we're very, very disappointed to lose. And um, you know, I think uh, you know, I think that's that's um, just that's something that we just have to accept. And but the players themselves, you know, should be very proud of the performance. They played play terrifically well. Thank you. Will Dalton from Virgin, please, next. Hi, Stephen. Will Dalton from Virgin Media News here. Um, listen, could I ask you, the energy seemed to be very good around training today. Um, you kind of almost forgive the boys for being a little bit down. Um, are you encouraging them to take the positives out of Thursday as much as they can? Because there was obviously an awful lot of positives from the performance. Yeah, I don't think I have to. I think they see it themselves. Like I think they see it go toe to toe in the last two away games against Bulgaria and Slovakia, and sort of largely controlled a lot of the game. And Slovakia was end to end, but. Um, and they've shown that they are good players and what they're capable of. But obviously we have to sort of uh, just <laughs> uh, improve upon that and just, um, and obviously, in, in, you know, and finish our chances and, and, uh, and create even more. So, you know, we, we um, they've seen that themselves and they've seen with their own eyes and, you know, they, they realise themselves. I don't really have to say that, you know, they know themselves that, that we have a lot of potential in the team and uh, that, you know, that when they, that they, they're certainly very capable footballers and they're well, they're well capable of really going toe to toe with some of the best teams. Alan Brown obviously came on and gave you a bit of an edge in extra time. It was unfortunate with the penalty miss, but as his performance, he did well um, when he came on. Has he given you some food for thought about maybe how, he may be worth a, a place in the starting eleven. Yeah, you know, Alan has sort of been a victim of his own versatility, really, because, you know, um, you know, he started the season at Preston playing right back this year because, you know, needs most at every club, you know, and that's that's the reality of it. And I think uh, he's played in in the middle of midfield. His favourite position is because when I first met him, you know, on the first Skype call or Microsoft Teams call, you know, I asked him initially what would, you know, what was his favourite position in, in regards to in various systems. And um, he sees himself as a number 10 uh, player, you know, playing high. You know, support and striker, and you know that's that's where he views himself. Uh, you know, he doesn't always play there, but he has played there this year for Preston as well. And 
Um, so, so that's so it's interesting. So he, he did well overall. <laughs> Obviously, could have had a hat trick, and um, the post one off the line, and, and the keeper made a good save for the other one. So, yeah, you know, just didn't go in from on the night. Okay, Thanks, Will, from off the ball next, please. Yeah, hi, Stephen. Alan was saying to us a bit earlier, he was actually thankful that the game on Sunday came around as quickly after the disappointment on Thursday night. Do you feel similar that it's probably a good thing to get refocused back into such an important game so quickly afterwards? Yeah, I'm sure the players would like another day, you know, another day maybe just to, after 120 minutes on the flight, because we only got back probably about half five in the morning, you know, here, but again, we got back, uh, you know, after uh, travelling through the night, so... I think, um, but listen, that's that's the nature of it. I'm not going to complain about that. I think it's great. I'm, you know, we're very proud to, very proud to be involved with the Irish international team and want to, want to, uh, you know, the players will want to perform every time they go out and represent Ireland. And I think they'll be very determined on Sunday against Wales. Wales, Wales have had the upper hand in recent times, including, of course, a four 0 four well, LA. A late consolation goal, but Wales were four 0 up, and we're not. They weren't flattered by that four 0 up at that time, and um, obviously subsequently won in Dublin after that as well in the Nations League. So, um, so we have it all to do, and we have to go and get ourselves ready and make sure that we're we're ready for Sunday. And Stephen, when it comes to these next five days or so, they're probably going to be pretty crucial in deciding how the Republic of Ireland's group stage plays out in this Nations League. Then. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, we'll have to, uh, you know, we, we used the initial two games to maybe get our ideas across. It was off season, you know, we needed to manage players in the first, the first month in the, in the games that were in the off season. Um, you know, that, that goes without saying. Um, obviously, uh, it, you know, with a view to the game of Bratislava, and to a point it worked because, you know, we had some players who knew exactly what was expected of them. And um, obviously, we, we Aaron Connolly had played in two th- those two games with a view to him playing also in the game in a certain way, but that that, that didn't materialise. But I think, um, um, but obviously we've lost the game on on the penalty shooter, so we have to dust ourselves down and get ourselves ready for. You know, for the game against Wales on Sunday, great big games against Wales and against Finland away, and uh, you know the competitive international games. Um, we have to, we have to, uh, you know, rest up really, and 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 get 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 the players ready to go again. Daniel, we'll have the last question here of the live section, then we'll go into the embargo. Hi, Stephen. I'm just sorry to go back to the situation with Aaron and Adam again, but in hindsight, is there aspects of operations over the last four or five days that you think could have been handled differently? And is that something maybe you've been speaking to the FAI about? Um, you know, What happens in house should sort of remain in house, you know. And I think the um, certainty, realistically, the person, you know, the, you know, it was a non-essential football member. On, you know, it wasn't a football member. It's a non-essential member in terms of an, in a crisis situation um, that travelled, and you know, that that's. You know that's um, that's something you know that 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 uh, we have to live with. Okay, guys, thanks very much. That's the end of the live section. Everything from now on is embargoed until uh, eleven p.m. tonight, and it's Neil O'Reardon from the Sun who's going to get us in the way. Hi, Stephen. It's kind of a follow-up to that. I'm just ask. I know it's a difficult topic, but do. The, the, the support staff who were involved in making those decisions in terms of who went on the team flight, did they enjoy your support and confidence? I'm not, not really. I'm, I'm, a, I'm the 
you know, the manager, the head coach of the football team. It's not, it's not for me to be making statements like that now, public statements like that. I think that's that would be grossly irresponsible of me to, to, to do that, I think, you know, and I think that's not uh, I'm not I'm not really gonna comment on, on on all of those aspects, you know, at the moment, Neil. You know, and that's that's just the way I genuinely feel, you know. Sure. Well uh, I Again, like I know um, you, you spoke before about your coaches, staff, people you brought in. You spoke of wanting a high performance environment, and is that something that has to go across the board, like striving to be the best to give the team and yourself the best possibility of success? Yeah, listen, we have a lot of great staff here, and uh, a lot of good people here, you know. And I think um, this is um, a situation that. Um, you know, is is unprecedented. You know for sure, and um, you know I think uh, it's something that you know we just have to contend with. And um, I don't think you know you know I think car you know without doubt everyone can learn, um, but. It's, um, it's 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 an unfortunate situation, and um, you know, and, and, and one one that uh, one that's you know we have to live with that. You know, I think we have to live with that. But I, I do think that uh, the performance itself was exceptional, regardless. Um, Although I would even be looking to improve on it again on, on several aspects, but um, I do think the players. Um, I'm really devastated for the players because they, they deserve to go through on the night and um, to go away to, you know, Slovakia away from home and <laughs> and play as well as they did and and uh, you know have a, so much possession. Um, and, and show a degree of creativity in the manner that they did. Um, I, I'm, you know, devastated because um, we all know the opportunity that existed, and then for to lose on the margins like that is just it's just something that, that everyone will have to accept. And you know, it's uh, but I cannot fault the players; they've been really, really brilliant, really, really brilliant. And I'm really my disappointment uh, essentially is for them because. Um, They've they've they've, they've uh, really performed really really well, and their attitude has been been exceptional. Okay, Gavin, please. Hi, Stephen. Uh, commiserations on the result on Thursday night. Uh, just to briefly follow on from what Neil is talking about, as a result of what happened, are you travelling with a smaller party to Finland? Yeah, well, my focus tomorrow at the moment is um, listen. We didn't we didn't travel with a big party anyway, you know. I think uh, we didn't. We don't travel with a big party. We didn't travel with a big party. Um, you know, not at all. And I think, um, um, but you know, so there won't be there won't be many changes um, for the Finland uh, flight, of course. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, there won't be that many changes. Yeah, uh, and just obviously we weren't in the ground, so it was it was very strange circumstances for everyone, but. The reason Aaron and Adam missed the game wasn't communicated until after the game, and actually no one realised they weren't on the bench until your pre-game TV interview. That was that a deliberate communication strategy, or was it just how it happened? Well, not from my point of view. You know, I'm I'm always very open and uh, quite open on on issues. So certainly, uh, it wasn't it wasn't deliberate. You know, we don't. Didn't have a, I didn't have a strategy. Just give honest answers to questions, and I think um, you know. So uh, that's that 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 is not the scenario at all, you know. And I think you know. I know Aaron. Aaron's test is is absolutely negative. You know, no problem at all. And, you know, that kind of way. So haven't haven't heard Adam, but it's absolutely negative. So it's uh, there's, so there's no issue with him anyway. He's a great lad. Uh, really felt for the two players, Aaron and Adam. You know, brilliant. Come through to the 15s in Ireland, all the way up to the under 21s. 
they're both still eligible. Obviously, Adam is a 2001 birthday, you know, which is hard to believe. Adam 2000 can still play for the under 21s, and um, they're playing in a match to get the team to the Euro you know, European Championships, and it's sort of it's derailed on you know the afternoon of it. So it's um, it's uh, so and then publicly, you know, the name and all of that, all that goes with that. Whether they're, they're perfectly fine and. Under UK law, they're at the point to continue playing and so forth, you know, with distances and so forth. It's just obviously the different medical rules in Ireland and, you know, I think over distances. And that's something that uh, it's hard to believe, really, you know, but, you know, it's hard to believe, but it's just something that we're going to have to accept. Paul Rowan, please. Hi, Stephen. Um, if you can hear me, I suppose what people want to know is, like, how, how did Ireland's, you know, arguably most dangerous player end up sitting less than two metres away from a non-essential member of staff on that flight. What happened, Stephen? You know, I'm not going into the operations of, of uh, you know, of, of flight seating at the moment. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not, not getting into that conversation now, Paul. I don't think that'd be, that'd be right. Was there some suggestion that... Um, that like uh, they might have moved, they were in their allocated seats or not? I mean, what, what, what they might have sort of moved or something? Yeah, that seems to be in the case. Yeah, that does seem to be in the case, you know. But again, I wouldn't have been aware of that because I was, you know, I was at the front of the front of the plane, obviously. But Ed Lee, he's so not you, and then we're gonna have to finish up after that. Stephen, how are you doing? Um, I suppose after what's been a whirlwind few weeks for you, um, have you can you allow yourself now to just take a breath and sort of start to look forward to even the World Cup campaign? And I suppose the job that you were initially brought in to do, and you know, having got over the unique situation of the last few weeks. Yeah, listen, you know that the, that's the thing about. Football and life itself, like you, you know, you get kicks in the teeth, but you have to respond in the, in the right manner. And I think, think we've got an opportunity now against Wales and Finland to to sort of play, try and get back and play well again, and put in a consistent level of performances before we we have three games in November, and then the World Cup qualifiers in March. And um, so, yeah, that's the nature of uh, football itself, and every international is significant. You know, every every international every player should really be proud to play for, for Ireland uh, when called upon, and uh, it's and they are the players are really really so so important in their lives and uh, so important in their careers. Play for the country, it's the highlight of their careers, and uh, it should never not be. And I think uh, so. That's that's the way you know I view it. That that is certainly the way I view it. And just, just in terms of the performance the other day, there's no doubt and widespread praise for the performance. Uh, obviously, in an ideal world, you'll still see areas that can be improved on. Where, where do you see the improvements for going forward for such a performance and what, what more could, do, could, could be added to that performance? Uh, you know, I'm not going to just say the obvious and, and say that we can, we can score score goals, but I think the uh, the um, I think generally some of the some of our play um, was exceptional, but we want to do it over a longer period in the game and uh, more consistently. And the players just when they sort of get more familiar about what we want to do, and um, we can maybe. Uh, you know, have even more of a cutting edge to our play on the field, even more. And um, but there was some real pluses, and uh, some some real real pluses. And um, you know, I uh, you know I'm quite excited by by some of the some of the performances as well. And um, it's probably we probably not see seeing Callum Robinson play like that for Ireland. Like sort of seen as some kind of maybe pacey player that runs over the top and chases stuff and trying to get him in over the top all the time. But we've probably seen a level of intelligence to his play, football intelligence that was and a real creative spark 
and and um, a, a real awareness of uh, space and his teammates. You know that was um, that was really really refreshing, really and good to see that. And um, obviously, in Lincoln with David McGoldrick was, was exceptional. I felt um, all the subs, all the players that come on, like that in terms of the three players behind the striker. Uh, you know, Robbie Brady, Alan Brown, and Callum O'Dowd all did very well. And, you know, the only thing lacking in them is matches at their clubs. You know, obviously, Callum O'Dowd hadn't played, obviously, for a month. That was a difficulty. He hadn't played since he came off injured against Finland. And um, because he'd been injured and his club played 3 5 2, and they're flying, they're having great form, Bristol City. And he's a winger, so it's difficult to find a place for a winger in 